and uh, talk to you. I've got something I want to talk to you about. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to carry on into the message, but I want to teach tonight a little bit, possibly preach. But I want to talk to you tonight about the laws of sowing and reaping. A lot of times we, a lot of times we give a lot, and I know a lot of people as Christians give, and I, I could show you a lot of Christians that just give and give and give and give, but don't truly understand what the principles and the laws in the kingdom and how the kingdom operates. Okay, and I want to I want to give you a couple of uh, words here of wisdom. It's the best way I know how to say it. Uh, so Lord, just guard my lips, God, my mind. Uh, Lord, allow me to feed your people with something that's going to help them, some substance, Lord, from your word, God, that's going to help us to grow and help us to come up in all ways in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 A lot of people live under a natural supply, that's, and a lot of Christians live under natural supply, okay? That is called the world system, okay? A lot of people live under the world system. You hear them talk, they only live by what they got, and that's it. There's no faith in what you got. You can't live a life of faith only on what you have or only on what you got budget for, okay? Nothing wrong with church budgets and all that. We get all that. We get, we get there's a budget. You got to be wise. You got to use wisdom and all that. But I'm just going to talk to you just for a few moments. So a lot of people live under this, 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 this natural supply and world system, okay? And that's why... It's time to move into the supernatural supply of the kingdom of God and to follow God's ways. Okay? God's ways, he said, are much higher than our ways. His thoughts are much higher than our thoughts. But he also said we have the mind of Christ. He also said we've been redeemed, that we've been bought with a price, that we've been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. That's why he said when you're born again, old things has passed away He said, all things have become new. God wants us to get so far into his kingdom and his ways that that, that he's the the source and the supply for everything that we have need of. Okay? So learning to sow financially is a big thing in your life that you want to do. And you want to learn how to cultivate that. You want to learn how to grow in those areas because you want to do it God's way. You don't want to have to go to the world system and, and like I said, and live under a natural supply. If you live under a natural supply, you'll never go nowhere. <clears throat> you'll never go nowhere in the kingdom. You'll never do nothing for God. You'll never do it. Only, only by faith will you accomplish anything uh, for God. Without faith, he said, it's impossible uh, to please him. <clears throat> so I want to read, faith comes by hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. <clears throat> so faith comes by hearing what is told. I'm going to read the Amplified. And what is heard comes by the preaching of the message concerning Christ, which is the anointing, the anointed one. So faith comes by the hearing of the preaching, the hearing of the word. That's why faith comes. That's why we preach, 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 hear, hear, hear. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. <clears throat> and, and it takes that sometimes for us to get it. Because we've been trained up in the world so long when we start hearing kingdom teaching. When we, heart, when we start hearing, a lot of Christians nowadays is like, when you start hearing something about sowing and reaping financially, you know, a lot of people, they get this, you get this thing because we've, we've been indoctrinated so long. And there are preachers that's, that's corrupt. I get that. There are preachers that's corrupt, that's about money. And, and there, you, could, you could go down the list of, of things that's wrong and things that's right. But what we have to do is stay scriptural. What we have to do is, is, is just obey what the Word of God says, learn to do it God's way, and look to God for our supply and not man anyway. Okay? Most people that start talking about that or start talking about the preacher, most of them is not doing right in their own life. And if you look at their life, I guarantee you there's somewhere in their life where they're probably robbing God, they're probably stealing from God, and then they're mad because somebody's up here teaching them the Word of God, which is coming against their sin. Okay? That's really what it comes down to most of the time. You understand that, okay? Or it could be an ignorance. It could be a lack thereof of, of knowledge. And that knowledge is confronting what they have been t- against, what they have been taught all their life, which is a natural system, which is the world system of doing things. You know, work hard for everything you get all of your life. Save everything you can, okay? 
amen, borrow and then, and then work all your life to pay it back, okay? And those are things that the world teaches you because that's the world system, okay? I'm not saying it's bad to borrow money. I'm not telling you that. But I'm telling you, if we, if we get over into the kingdom and we learn the laws of sowing and reaping and we learn to respond in faith when we bring our financial seed, there's nobody that I know that does not want to prosper. They might tell you they don't out of false humility. But if they didn't, then why are they working so hard to get a raise? Why are they working so hard to go to school so they can have a better education, so they can get a better job, which will bring a more supply of money, which most of the time you just live at a higher level and the money that you've got, you just, it just, it just you know what I mean. So there's nothing wrong with wanting to prosper and succeed. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? But that's not my aim in life, is to go after the things and have money and have the things. My aim is to please God and to win Christ. That's my aim in life. Okay? That should be your aim. You shouldn't be running after things and money. If you're running after them, you're going to be miserable. You're, just, you're, you're going to be miserable. But if you'll run after Him and you'll start to obey Him in these things, those things will start to be provided for you. Not only your needs, but your wants will start to be provided as God sees that He can trust you. Now I want to say this right here. I want to, I want to, try, to, I want to try to pinpoint this. Just a few, few short minutes. Just stay with me. Matthew chapter 16, 19. He said, I will give you the keys of authority of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will have already been forbidden in heaven. Whatever you permit on earth will already have been permitted. And then Galatians chapter 7, there's one you can, you can look. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. I think that's what that is. Let me go back, back there and just check it out just to make sure. Um, or, or he that sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Let's go to Galatians real quick. I want to teach you something tonight. I'm usually just preaching to you. I said chapter 7. ain't no chapter 7. Couldn't be chapter 7. Chapter 6. Chapter 6. I'm sorry. And we're online too, so there you go. Don't get mad at me. Okay, it says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Verse 7. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh of the flesh reap corruption. He that sows to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. And I want, to, I want to tell you something. The laws of the kingdom have been since the beginning of the earth. The laws of seed time and harvest, as long as the earth remains, there'll be, there'll be laws of, of seed time and harvest. When God created the plants of the earth, now I want you to look at this. When God created the plants of the earth, he created each one after its kind. He created it. He created the plant. The plant produced fruit, which gave off seed. The seed you would take and put back into the ground and plant it. When you plant that seed, you fertilize it, you water it, you watch over it. The sun hits it. All of a sudden, that seed becomes a tree, which becomes a sprout, which becomes fruit, which produces more seed. Seed always reproduces more seed. Amen? So... The thing, the thing about we have to understand about the kingdom is this. It's the same way the laws spiritually are the same way they are naturally. That's why we sow financial seed. Okay, But to understand why we sow financial seed, first we tithe. We understand that. That is the lowest form. If you have to be pumped up to tithe, then you're in trouble. I'll just say that to you. You're in trouble. You need to, you need to get right. But... When you tithe, there's a system that God set up. And he says, bring the tithe in and I'll open you the windows of heaven. That means you get access to heaven. You get access to the kingdom, okay? That means there's an open window. There's open, open heaven in your life. You've got access. Tithing does that. If you do not tithe, it shuts heaven up over your life. You're back under a world system, Okay? And I mean, it just happens. It's not, it's not a, you, you try to get God to do it. He said, this is it. Here's the key. Okay. Here's the key. I'm going to give you the key 
the, the keys to the kingdom. I'm going to give you the keys and the ways to access, amen, ways to access, you know, heaven, to way, ways to access me. And you use them and they work. You don't and they don't work, okay? So that means that we have responsibility, right? So he said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. So I'm just using this as an example. So I'm a tither. So the windows of heaven are opened over my life. And not only are they opened over my life, but I confess that they're opened over my life. Now, if you notice in Malachi, he said this. He said, you've robbed me in what? In tithes and offerings. So there's something to do with offerings that, that you've got to learn to respond with. If you never learn to respond with extra more than your tithe, you'll never increase God's way. Okay? You might increase the world's way. Dog eat dog, you're going to fight, you're going to do fight for everything that you get, okay? You're going to, you know what I'm talking about, and unless, unless the devil gives it to you, you know what I'm saying, to deceive people, but to do it God's way, you want to have God's blessing, right? So as we, as we give people an opportunity to sow and to tie, tie opens the windows, your seed that you sow is above the tithe that you bring, and it re reproduces kind after kind. But to understand the way God uses this system, He says, "You know what? If 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 I can't trust you with the natural things, we always go back to this. if I can't trust you with the natural things, then I can't trust you with my kingdom. I can't trust you with the true riches. The true riches ain't the things that you hold. It ain't the car that you drive. It ain't the money you have in the bank. I promise you, that's not the true riches of the kingdom." But if I, if I act ignorant and say it's not in the kingdom, then that's, that's ignorance too to say that because we're here. And God said to have dominion and take the earth's resources and use them to serve man and to worship God with. That means use the earth's resources to accomplish God's will, okay, and to live. We have, we have to drive a car, you have to live. So to, to say, well, I don't need them things, well, that would be ignorance. And you'd be riding a bicycle or walking, which you can do that. If you want, but you won't get as far, and you won't get there as fast, and you won't accomplish as much, right? So there's laws that God set up, and there's keys that God's given you, ways that you can access, and he said the seed produces, reproduces kind after kind. But the whole thing about this is, is when you respond naturally and sow seed financially, or with resources, into good ground, okay? Now watch. Not only in due season will you reap financial harvest, or material thing, whatever it is that you, that you have need of, or to account, whatever it might be. Could, be. could be people fixing stuff, your car. It could be supernatural things like that happening. Instead of everything tearing up, everything's responding. Everything don't tear up in my life. Things happen at times, but everything don't tear up. Everything responds to me. Everything responds to, the, to, to, to help accomplish the mission. Does that make sense? So, the thing about this law is, a lot of time God uses this to see if He can trust you with this. He'll, use, he'll, use, he'll, he'll challenge you financially to test your faith, to test your obedience, to see if He can trust you with what He's really wanting to give to you, which is the anointing, which is more of the anointing, which is more of His kingdom, which is more of Himself. That's His goal. But if you never learn these laws and how to respond and how to, how to, how to bring offerings and how to give and to sow into the anointings and to sow into God's work, then you'll never reap God's harvest. Okay? And God's wanting you, his, he said, like he said, in, 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 he said, it's his will that you prosper and that you would be in health, okay, that you succeed in reaching, okay? So God's trying to keep us free from these things, but to use them to serve him to be in a place of trust. So if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully, okay? It's time for us to move into the supernatural provision, and get out of the natural supply realm, which is the world system. You can stay in the world system if you want to. Either way, that's up to you what you do. All my, my job is to teach you, to teach you the kingdom, 
to teach you these laws, to teach you these things. Why? Because Jesus said it's finished. He said it's already accomplished. But you have a part to play. You have, to, you have to respond. You have to walk by faith. You have to learn to believe God's word. You have to study to show yourself approved. You have to sow. You have to, you have to do these things. And I want to say this, those of you that's been sowing financially. Okay, you probably already witnessed things in your life right now. But listen, in due season, he said you would reap. And when the time comes that God can trust to release things to you, release more anointing in your life. Because let me tell you something, more, more anointing comes with a greater supply because there's a greater demand. Amen? And we're after the anointing. We're after more of him, more of the anointing. Amen? I remember uh, starting out, well, let me, let me say this right here. I got some friends that are that are Mennonites, and I want to close right here with this. I'm just trying to give you some meat here, okay? We're talking about financial seed, but I know some Mennonites that started out. A friend of mine that started out. He started out. He got he got a, he got an idea that he wanted to start a metal company. So he stepped out by faith, and he got him he, him and his wife. They got a little bitty trailer. They started working. He started going out and doing jobs. He said, finally, that grew a little bit. And he said he got hired his first guy. He said, well, I didn't want my wife in a trailer with a guy, so I got another trailer. I said, probably a good idea. <laughs> he was smart, too. Not only wise, but he was smart. And uh, so he got him another trailer. So the guy that he hired stayed in this little trailer, and she stayed in this little trailer. And they worked. And he said, I give you power to get wealth. So he began to work and put his hand to something. Okay, but I know this man personally. I've known him for years and years and years. And I've watched him. And the one thing that sticks out to me now, seeing them now and hearing the story of where they started out. Kids, turn around. Follow me here. Come here. I know, it's not the, I know I'm not the best youth minister in the world. But just listen to me. I'm going to give you something that's going to help you. Listen, this is really cool stuff because you're going to need this one day. This, you're really going to need this. This is good stuff. So he steps out. Listen to me. And he, he starts this business and he gets his wife involved and he starts putting his hand to it and he does his part to, do, to be diligent. He works hard. God said he'd give you power to get wealth. He didn't say he'd just give you power and it'd come to you all. You know what I'm saying? He'd give you power to put your hand to something that he could prosper it. Okay? But one thing that stuck out to me was they worked hard. They're diligent. Okay? They're diligent in what they was doing. They just stuck with it. They just stayed with it, what they felt God was leading them to do. And they stayed with it. But here's one thing they operate in. 120% they operate in these laws of seed time and harvest. They tithe to their church. They give offerings to their church. They help anybody that they can. You understand this? I watch it every... He, I watch, their church, they, I've learned so much just being around them. They operate in these laws even though they don't even, they don't even say it, but they operate in these laws and these laws work. It has to work. you got to understand that. It has to respond. When you do your part in the supernatural realm, in the natural realm, things have to respond. When you tithe, the windows of heaven open over your life. It has to. That's access to heaven. If, you're, if the windows are open, that means there's access. Now there's ways I can access more. There's ways I can access Jesus the healer and activate that in my life. Okay? A lot of us confess those scriptures. By his stripes I'm healed. All this. Okay. But everybody's not healed. Doesn't change redemption. Doesn't change that Jesus said it's, it's finished. It's already accomplished. Then why is Christian sick? Get what I'm saying to you. If, if God's will is for me to be healed, if God's will is for me to prosper, then why are we not prospering? Why are we not healed? Well, that could be different for each person. It could be disobedience. He said there's many sick among you. I'm just using this as an example, trying to teach you laws here. Okay? And, and this all comes from relationship, but knowing the Word of God, responding to the Word of God by relationship. Okay? And every outside of relationship, that's religion. Everything I'm teaching you comes from a walk with him, a relationship with him. Now I have a knowledge of the truth. Now he can. Now once I have a knowledge of the truth, he can speak to me about something to respond to it and then to believe him for it. You'll never get nothing in this kingdom. You'll never get nothing with God unless you believe it, unless you have faith for it, and, unless, unless you believe it and you... you amen. Y'all follow me here. 
So, so, so healing's available, but everybody's not healed. And that's why, that's why Paul told them, he said, there's many that, that, that's sick among you. There's many that sleep the sleep of death because you don't discern the Lord's body. You ain't even discerning it. You ain't, he, he goes deeper in that. He's talking about the church too. But you're not discerning the Lord's body. That's why there's many of you sick. There are many of you that sleep to sleep and you sleep the sleep of death. That means they've already left because of these things. Because we've got bad doctrines that say, well, uh, you know, everything's, you know, we just whatever will be, will be. I just walk along and whatever happens, it just happens. You know, that is the worst thing you ever want to say in your whole entire life. Because he said you can lengthen your days and you can shorten your days, church. Very clear in many of scriptures. That you can shorten your days and you can lengthen them. So we're talking about, we're talking about laws of seed time and harvest financially, which is spiritual too. They're spiritual laws, but they're, they're natural laws also. Okay, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. The lamb was slain before the foundation, but was manifested, brought into the natural realm in these last days, for me and for you. But it was already accomplished here. In God's eyes, it was already, it, it was already done here. He's slain before the foundation of the world. It was already here, accomplished. But it was brought out into the natural. Faith is the substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. Evidence of things not seen. But these, these, these Mennonite brothers... They operate in laws of seed time and harvest greater than most people that I know. And, they, and I, I hear the stories about it then, but I look on their wall, and they're doing their business, and they've got plaques from each year. And, and the first one starts out, we sold $500,000 worth of metal this year. The next year, 700000 The next year, 900000 The next year, $1 million. The next year, $1.3 million. The next year... And, and, and I'm sure this year's probably doubled. You can watch a life that has prospered. And they're still the most humble, the most giving people that you'll ever meet in your entire life. Millionaires. Understand me. And they started out with God giving them something to do and they put their hand to it. And they began to tithe. They began to give. He said their church, he said they had, a, they had one of their brothers that had a bad, bad role with a lot of their tractors and stuff. This is just where God's took their church to. So they went to church and, 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 and my friend was the coordinator of this. He's the one that coordinates everybody. He lost like $60,000, $70,000 worth of equipment. So all the brothers get together and they said, all right, guys, what are we going to do? He said, well, I got 10000 on it. Okay, I got ten thousand. All of a sudden, they started getting this cash. He said they walked over. They had seventy thousand dollars worth of cash put on the table right there in the middle of the church. He said, "Give it to that brother and go help him buy some buy some equipment. Get back on his feet." Because he didn't have insurance at that time. Because they operate in these laws, but they're diligent in what they're doing. They're faithful to what they're doing and what what they're putting their hand to do. I'm using that as an example because that's the best way I can. I can use my own example because God's prospered me in many of ways. And he's still prospering me, which I'm called into the ministry. I'm called to preach. I'm not called to build a a metal company. Okay? There's a difference. But when you learn to respond above your tithe and you learn to respond in faith, believe in God. God will begin to increase your life and he will begin to prosper you his way. Not the world's way. Not the world's system. You'll start to... You'll, what, what God's trying to do is get you into this place right here. I know, I, know, I know we got kids running around, but praise God we do. Listen, what God's trying to do is get you out of the world system and get you into kingdom system and get you into to, to the ways, following His ways so He can get you into supernatural supply. Supernatural supply, there's nothing like it. I promise you, a life of faith with God... In supernatural supply, there's nothing that compares to it ever. I've had motors put in vehicles and had not one dollar financially. 
And it just happened. Why? Because I had been sowing. And I had been sowing into the anointings. And I had been sowing into God's work in the church. And I had been sowing financial seed consistently responding to God, believing God that He was going to supply all my needs according to His riches and glory. That He was going to not let me fail. That He was always going to provide. He was always going to provide our needs. He was always going to... But not only the needs, but we're looking to go above and beyond that. Because we're trying to go somewhere and accomplish something for God. So if God can trust you with it here, His goal is to raise you to here. But if He can't trust you with what the supply that you have right here to start responding in these principles and in these laws, how can He ever release or or elevate you to here? Okay? He's about building the kingdom and advancing the kingdom. He's not, he's not, he, don't, he don't mind you prospering. That's his will for you to prosper and, and succeed in what you set out to do. But never away from kingdom mindset to say, hey, I'm a funnel and I can be a funnel to bring a supply to the preaching of the gospel and the building of the church. The building of the kingdom. When you learn this principle, when you learn to set like he did in Haggai, and he said when they set their back and when they started building again the temple and they started putting their effort and their finances and everything into building my temple, revival came to them. Not only revival, but man, they started prospering and everything. Everything that he said we set out to do, he said it would prosper. But we're about kingdom mindset, keeping you so kingdom-minded Because some will be called out to go out and start big, huge businesses and corporations and things like that. But if God can't trust you to do what He says with the finances that come in, if He can't trust you with thousands, how's He going to trust you with millions? There's some people that's going to be called to handle millions and billions in the kingdom. But if you can't trust Him to respond in a thousand dollar offering, a seed to sow then how's he ever going to elevate you to a place where he can funnel millions through you? Where you can be blessed and everybody around you is blessed, but then he says, I tell you what, write a $2.5 million check and give it to New Creation Life. No problem. There you go. No problem at all. Well, I'm just using us as an example because I like us. But <laughs> you get what I mean. So you, you, you got to, to, and then to say, well, I don't, I don't want to prosper in life. I don't want to, I don't, I, you just want to be, well, let's stop working hard. Just stop doing everything you do and just lay down. Really don't do that. But when people say stuff like that, it's very ignorant. Because why does people work so hard? Why do they work two jobs so they can pay bills? Why do they, why do they slave labor? Why do they do everything they can do? Why do they, why do they go to school? So they can make more money. So they can have nicer things. God's trying to get you into His ways <laughs> where He can do it for you. <laughs> and you ain't got to go the world's way. Uh, is that good, church? Come on. Is that helping anybody? So what I'm going to say, I'm going to close with this. Learning to sow financially. Learn to be a giver. Learn to be a sower. If you give to the poor, God will give it back to you. But that's not why you do it. You do it because you're a Christian and you love people and you love God. You do it because you see a need and you got a chance to respond to it and you just respond to it. You don't do it. You don't do it with saying, well, I'm just going to get it back. You do it because you've got a heart for love. You've got a heart for people. So he said, if you lend to the poor, he said, or if you give to the poor, you're lending to the Lord. So when you learn these principles and you learn to sow and you learn to be challenged financially, Not only will He trust you with more finances, but He'll trust you with more anointing. And that's the goal. To me, that's the goal. To win Christ, that's the goal. So, anyway, I pray you've been blessed today. I pray that this has helped you. If you have any questions online, if anything's confused, you get with us. And I pray that it hasn't. But learning, learning God's system, that's what we're doing here. Learning how to function and how to operate in the kingdom of His dear Son that we're in. Learning how to respond, uh, amen, so we can come up God's way and not the world's way. Amen. We can trust Him for His supernatural provision in our life and His and, and Him to prosper us His way. Amen. In Jesus' name. So listen, if you got anything 
Taz tonight. 